Morning everybody, uh, welcome to uh, our series morning prayer. Uh, so today's Friday the 20th, so I'm going to lead us just in a, a, a simple morning prayer, but welcome, uh, whether you're kind of at home, in the office, just stuck somewhere and you're kind of catching up on our YouTube channel, great to have us, uh, I'm great to have you with us. Um, we introduced my congregation yesterday, we've, we've grown, uh, we, we do have more members. Uh, uh, let me show you who we have. So you, you met Guido the other day, so Guido our dinosaur, we now have swelled, we've doubled in size, we have, um, we can see uh, Guido and, and Wilma, so that is actually our authentic Wilma, the original Wilma toy, but um, there, there's a problem, you, you may have spotted something's not right here, and I, now, now I thought I told you guys, we, we were quite serious about social distancing. Uh, and that's not the regulated two meters. I, I really do think, I'm afraid, that we do need to comply and set a good example. So Wilma, you're gonna have to come over here and I reckon probably there is, is, is probably a good, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, that, I think that's okay, we're safe. Excellent. Right, so let's get back to morning prayer. Let's get that all set up, there we go. Fantastic, excellent. Right. If you want to follow along, by the way, then um, Church of England does a really good app, a morning prayer app that you can download um, onto either Android or iPhone. It's all available. Uh, so just do a quick search across the store. So morning prayer during the season of Lent, Friday the 20th of March. The Lord open our lips and the mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. And it's a suitable song of blessing as we start. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn, and your healing springs up for our deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit. And open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. So the night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. So as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. So our psalm is, is a bit of an epic, actually. That's Psalm 22. So I'm going to read just a small part of that, but of course follow on with the full parts in your own time. Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? and are so far from my salvation, from the words of my distress. O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer, and by night also, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forebears trusted in you. They trusted, and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They put their trust in you and were not confounded. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him deliver him if he delights in him. But it is you that took me out of the womb and laid me safe upon my mother's breast. And you was I cast ever since I was born. You are my God even from my mother's womb. Be not far from me. For trouble is near at hand, and there is none to help. Mighty oxen come around me, fat bulls of Bashan close me in on every side. They gape upon me with their mouths, as if it were a ramping and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, all my bones are out of joint. My heart has become like wax, melting in the depths of my body. My mouth is dried up like a pot shirt, my tongue cleaves to my gums. You've laid me in the dust of death. For the hounds are all about me. The pack of evildoers close in on me. 
They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stand staring and look upon me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not far from me, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And also our Gospel, oh no, our New Testament reading is from Hebrews. Again, we'll just do a portion of this. So Hebrews 7. Now if perfection had been attainable through the Levitical priesthood, the people who received the law under this priesthood, what further need would there have been to speak of another priest arising according to the order of Melchizedek, rather than one according to the order of Aaron? For where there is a change in the priesthood, there is necessarily a change in the law as well. Now the one of whom these things are spoken belonged to another tribe, from which no one has ever served at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord was descended from Judah, and in connection with that tribe, Moses said nothing about priests. It is even more obvious when another priest arises resembling Melchizedek, one who has become a priest, not through a legal requirement concerning physical descent, but through the power of an indestructible life. For it attested of him, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. There is, on the one hand, the abrogation of an earlier commandment, because it is weak and ineffectual, for the Lord made nothing perfect. There is, on the other hand, the introduction of a better hope, through which we approach God. I, I don't get to choose the lectionary readings, they just appear as they, uh, they do in the sequence of readings. But I find it fascinating that actually, as we know what's going on in our world, in our nation, these two readings should be what we have. The psalm that speaks of somebody who feels neglected, somebody who feels abandoned. And of course this is probably David, King David, writing through a, an incredibly difficult trial and persecution and maybe feeling abandoned, as we may also feel in this time. And then it flicks tone from David speaking about actually feeling abandoned. We then have that almost prophetic voice about Christ being nothing but skin and bone, of having his possessions divided up by lots. And we see the echo of actually what takes place, as we well know, at Easter. Christ himself upon the cross felt abandoned in that very brief moment when God could not look upon the sin of the world, but turned his back against that. And Christ, bearing the full weight of that sin, that separation from us and God, paid the price. And it'd be sad if we left it there, but of course we don't leave it there. Our Hebrews reading talks about a priest of the order of Melchizedek. I won't bore you by going into that one too much. But other than say, actually through Christ's death and resurrection, we have a great high priest who has paid the price for all our sins and actually is the one who is seated at God the Father, welcomes us, beckons us, invites us into God's presence. And though in this dark time, we might feel abandoned and neglected, as if God has turned his face. That is not true. That is not the truth. For truth trumps fickle feelings. God says, I will never leave you, nor forsake you. And Christ is with us, and beside us, and ahead of us, and sitting at the right hand of God to intercede for us. So we are a people of hope, a people of trust, a people of confidence. But to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul, and my God, in you I trust. You are the God of my salvation. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I hope all the day long. Oh, my God, in you I trust. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Oh, my God, in you I trust. So let us pray. Father, we pray for all those affected through the coronavirus and the different changes we're having to make, particularly praying for those who had all their hopes and plans dashed, thinking about wedding couples, where actually some tough decisions now need to be made about continuing or postponing, or simply simplifying 
all that they had planned. Father, for those coming to funerals, Lord, to say their goodbyes and now feel that they can't. Lord, we pray for them. Father, even from a home, you would bring your comfort to each and every one. To our wedding couples, you'd give wisdom. But actually, Lord, we thank you that some are reviewing the reasons for their marriage and deciding that actually it's about marriage in your sight, not about celebration and parties. But Lord, we pray you continue to help those whose plans have been changed. We pray also for our emergency services. We give you thanks for all that they are doing and that care and sacrifice for one another, for our communities. Father, help them. Give them all the support and resources that they need. Comfort them and sustain them, we ask. Lord, for our elderly within our communities, those who live close to us, those who we know personally, Gracious Lord, we name them in our hearts in this moment. We ask, O Lord, that you would be with them. Give us wisdom as to how we might be a word of encouragement, support and strength to them. Father, we pray that you would help them. They would hear your voice in times of anxiety. They would know your peace that passes all of our understandings. So gracious Lord, these and all other prayers that we've uttered in our hearts, we bring before you. We thank you, O Lord, because you sit at the right hand of the Father. You hear our prayers. So merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so our prayer as set for this day. Almighty God, who called your servant Cuthbert from the following the flock to follow your son and to be a shepherd of your people, in your mercy, grant that we, follow his example, may bring those who are lost home to your fold, through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so joining together and trusting in the compassion of God, as our Saviour taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May God our Redeemer show us compassion and love. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Keep safe, keep wise, and look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bless you.
in him be found, oh yeah Dressed in his righteousness alone Faultless stand before the throne 